You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, I'd like to call this meeting to order. The RTM will be convened on Wednesday, March 11th, 2020 at 8 p.m. at the Brantford Fire Headquarters, 45 North Main Street, to consider and act upon the following matters. Everybody, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number one, roll call. Good evening. Representative Edelman. Present. Representative Alphone. Here. Representative Anderson. Here. Representative Austin. Here. Representative Black. Here. Representative Brockett. Here. Representative Conklin. Here. Representative Everson. Here. Representative Erlanger. Here. Representative, whoops, Greenberg. Here. Representative Haken. Representative Healy. Present. Representative Henschel. Here. Representative Hines. Here. Representative Ingraham. Here. Representative Jackson. Representative Kelly. Representative Lombardi. Here. Representative Preet. Representative Riccio. Representative Sember. Here. Representative Sires. Here. Representative Sumro. Representative Stepanik. Here. Representative Sullivan. Here. Representative Torelli. Representative Tuhill. Here. Representative Wells. Um, ex officios. Town Clerk Arpin and Second Selectman Dunbar. Yeah, sorry. Representative Flanagan. Okay. Okay, approval of the minutes of the previous meetings. I have a motion to, for approval. I make a motion, Mr. Moderator. Is there a second? Any discussion on the motion to approve the minutes of the previous meetings? Hearing none, all those in favor, favor single by, by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Minutes are approved without exception. Item number three, reception of communications, reports of committees, and citizens' petitions. <clears throat> I have one pertaining to March Madness food collection for the Brantford Feed the Kids. Uh, the date, please bring your donations by March 31st to the town clerk's office, the community house, or the Willoughby, Water Sli Willoughby Wa Wallace Library. And uh, they're looking for breakfast bars, instant oatmeal, fig bars, all healthy stuff. I have a series of petitions here. First one, uh, but all, this, uh, all these petitions uh, meet the requirements of the town code of the 50 signatures and they all have been verified by the town clerk. An examination of the 77 acre Tabor property, its current use and the development of a master plan. I will send that to administrative services. Okay. Next one I have is another petition, uh, an examination of the past and present living conditions at Parkside Village Housing Complex and its oversight by the Brantford Housing Authority. I will send this to the Rules and Ordinance Committee. Item three, an examination of potential improperties occurring during Costco's inland wetlands application and independent peer review process, along with the examination of the investigation into the matter promised by the first selectman. This will go to R and O. <clears throat> 
Next one is to consider the possibilities of, pel of public health hazards emanating from the demolition debris site at the former Atlantic Wire site. I will send this to Administrative Services Committee. The next one is an examination of the role of the town of Brantford in the removal of the earth horn, earth horn berm by the Brantford Land Trust at Jarvis Creek and the potential for public safety hazards from the res resulting from the flooding of Route 146. This will go to the Administrative Services Committee. And that's all I have at this point. I had six letters um, from Iris. Uh, they didn't meet the guidelines of the town code, Mr. Cook, therefore I will deal with those at the April meeting. Well, what's the guidelines of the town code? 48 hours prior to the meeting. Well, you've taken my letters very well within that guideline. You just, came, you just presented it to the town clerk today. No, I sent them last night. Well, so that's, that's not 48 hours. hours, Wayne. Well, can I hand these out as part of the uh, research that goes along with one of those letters so that the RTM members can see it beforehand? Does it pertain to what I sent to committee? Is that what you're referring no, to? No, this is pertaining to one of the letters, but I'd like them to see this. No, not at this time. Not till I review Why the not? letters. When I review the letters, I'll give you, you my see, disposition. What's going on here, Dennis, is that's once it. again, lack of accountability. Okay? You know, Wayne, that's so my you're decision. You're just using your own discretion here. There's no reason you couldn't have read those letters. There's okay. absolutely no reason you can't read those okay. letters. It's my decision. Tell us all why you can't read Because uh, you're not following the rules of the town. That's it's at your discretion. End of discussion. That's the rule. End of discussion. No, 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 End no. of discussion. No, Sit down. You're out of your order. Discretion. You're out of order, Wayne. Sit I'm down. not out of order. I'm, I'm not going to deal with, with you anymore. You're no, out of I'm order. I'm challenging your rule because okay, that's it's it. at your discretion. That's it. That I'm moving on to item number you four. You think the letters are going to go away? You think I, those item number are four. Go away? You think the issues are going to go away? Yeah. You know, Dennis, as they say, you can run, but you can't hide. All right. Item number four, to consider and if appropriate, adopt the uniform procedure for ordinance enforcement pursuant to town meeting rules A236-4, 19-D. Representative Black. Mike, Thank you, sir. sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, <laughs> rules and ordinance did go over a draft of this and there were a couple of changes that we made and then uh, since that we've gone over that uh, Representative Henschel and I have met with the town attorney and uh, believe we have a final draft of this. It's gone out to the committee um, to have a one last committee chop at it before we bring it to the full body. Um, so at this point the committee's motion was to uh, recommend re-referral, so I'll put that in the form of a motion. Uh, point of order, Mr. Uh, moderator. Yes. Um, Mr. Black, um, I think we're on item four, which is the, uh, I'm sorry, that's the, you're on item four, Dennis, or four. five? Four. four. Okay. Four. Disregard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, motion, uh, motion yeah, is a report re for representative. That's what I thought I was talking about, even if it didn't appear that way. Stand corrected. <laughs> motion on the floor for re-referral on item number four. Uh, any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This item is re-referred. Item number five, to consider and if appropriate, approve an agreement between the Town of Brantford and the United Public Services Employee Union, local number 10, Parks Recreation and custodians through June 30th, 2022. Uh, this will be Representative Black, and this this is a combination of two unions, but it's the same 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 local. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. It's one union, but uh, one contract. One contract. Uh, uh, different town departments. Some of these, a uh, few of the uh, custodians are in GGB. Right. Uh, most of these employees are in Parks and Rec. It's 2.5% uh, raises that we've been handing out uh, to other uh, employees as well, and a few small changes like adding bereavement uh, leave for grandchildren, um, which shouldn't have a big impact and in some increase in some of the employees' share on health insurance. Uh, we heard this um, ways and means and voted unanimously in favor, so I put that in the form of a motion. Any discussion on the motion to approve these two contracts? Representative Sullivan? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, in similar fashion to my opposition to the contracts last month, 
or the contract last month, um, I'm rising to oppose this contract. One of the problems that we have is um, we don't, when, by the time these contracts get to the RTM, they're a done deal, and we don't really get to see the language or understand what happened in the negotiations. Um, and once again, the, this contract and the next one has language that uh, employees would put that would be required to pay union fees. Um, it, it was all struck from the contracts. Um, now, and I understand that this is due to the Janus decision um, by the Supreme Court, which basically said that people can be in a union, get all the benefits of being in a union and having a negotiated contract and pay no dues to have staff or attorneys represent them, like what was happening uh, as these contracts were negotiated with the town. Um, now, there is actually a bill in Hartford right now being considered um, that would uh, clarify how this language should be handled to be in compliance with the Janus decision. And my big concern is I think that the, just completely striking the language is too aggressive. Um, it would be a lot better off if uh, the language would just be added at the end of the section as I drop that. Um, something along the lines of uh, unless the employee opts out of membership and shall not be required to pay the fees. I think striking the language completely just opens it up to um, hurting the unions and hurting our public sector employees. Um, and I did mention that state bill, it's, uh, HB 5270, if people want to go check out that language and the information that's being discussed in Hartford. So uh, once again, I'm in a opposition to this contract um, just because I think that striking the language completely uh, weakens our public sector unions. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, this will be a roll call vote. This is on item five, correct? Uh, this is item yeah. four. Five, right? Five, yeah. Okay, Representative Edelman. Yes. Representative Alphone. Yes. Representative Anderson. Yes. Representative Austin. Yes. Representative Black. Yes. Representative Brockett. Yes. Representative Conklin. Yes. Representative Everson. Yes. Representative Erlanger. Yes. Representative Greenberg. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Healy. Yes. Representative Henschel. Yes. Representative Hines. Yes. Representative Ingraham. Yes. Representative Leach. Yes. Representative Lombardi. Yes. Representative Sember. Yes. Representative Sires. <coughs> Representative Sumro. Oh, absent, sorry. Representative Stepanek? Yes. Representative Sullivan? No. Representative Torelli? Absent. Representative Tuhill? Yes. Representative, that's it. Thank you. Okay, the two contracts passed. Item number six. One, one contract. contract. <laughs> well, no, he, this is one contract. He's, he made it's it. Two areas. It's it's a two, two, so two separate things that we voted on. The Sodians and the Park and Rec came under the same contract. Yes. So Correct. Both. It's all one bargaining unit. Right. Item number six, to consider and if appropriate, approve an agreement between the Town of Brantford and the United Public Services Employee Union Local 405 Town Hall employees <clears throat> through June 30th, 2022. Representative Alphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, again, this contract very similar to the last contract that we just passed with some of the uh, um, benefits to the town and the employees, just to highlight a couple um, in this contract. The town of Brantford may, some changes in this contract, the previous contract. The town of Brantford may elect to submit a memorandum of, a memorandum of agreement for the use of performance evaluations. Change language, which eliminates the legal requirements for an employee to pay union dues. Um, an increased number of pro probationary period for new employees from 90 days to 120 calendar days. Uh, there is a 2.5% wage increase retroactive to July 1st, 2019. Um, there's also an increase in the high deductible, high copay plan, insurance plan from 12% to 13% effective July 1st, 2020 and an increase in that same plan from 13 to 14% effective July 1st, 2021. Um, there's about 21, 22 members, I believe, in this collective bargaining unit. 
and the committee did pass this with a unanimous 6 to 0 vote. Okay. Motion on the floor is to approve. Uh, any discussion? Representative Sullivan, any statement? <laughs> uh, replay the tape. To the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no further, if there's no further discussion, this will be a roll call vote also. Okay. Item six. Okay. Representative Edelman. Yes. Representative Alphone. Yes. Representative Anderson. Yes. Representative Austin. Yes. Representative Black. Yes. Representative Brockett. Yes. Representative Conklin. Yes. Representative Everson. Yes. Representative Erlanger. Yes. Representative Greenberg. Yes. Representative Healy. Yes. Representative Henschel. Yes. Representative Hines. Yes. Representative Ingraham. Yes. Representative Leach, yes. Representative Lombardi. Yes. Representative Sember. Yes. Representative Sires. Yes. Representative Stepanek. Yes. Representative Sullivan. No. Representative Tuhill. Yes. Representative, that's it, sorry. <laughs> Last person is absent, so I keep. Okay. <laughs> okay, contract has been approved. Item number seven, to consider and, if appropriate, create a blight ordinance for the town of Brantford. Representative Black. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Moderator. Uh, R&O had a fairly lengthy discussion on this, and we're moving at the usual R&O speed on this matter. Uh, so we voted to re-refer this matter, and I put that in the form of a motion. <coughs> motion on the floor to re-refer this item. Any discussion on the re-referral? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? This item is re-referred. Item number eight, to consider if appropriate, approve an appropriation from the general fund into the land acquisition fund to provide additional resources for the Crescent Bluff land purchase as per required conditions of the settlement and to create an appropriation in the land acquisition fund for the total purchase amount, purchase amount and act on the following resolution. From general fund contingency 25,000 to transfer out land acquisition 25,000 and from land acquisition fund to increase transfer in by 25,000 and to increase fund balance transfer by 175,000 and to increase land acquisition by 200,000. Resolved that the RTM approves an appropriation of 200,000 in the land acquisition fund. This appropriation will be funded through an appropriation from the fund balance and transfer from the general fund. Representative Black. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Arno heard this. Um, so also heard the previous night, really at a little more length in admin services. Um, this is a settlement of long going litigation on Crescent Bluff that really extends back a hundred years. Um, do I like this settlement? No, like most settlements, it's the worst or the best of bad options. Um, and as our attorney from Robinson and Cole explained, we lost at the trial level here when we weren't involved as a town. And uh, this is, uh, you know, cheaper than any litigation is going to be. Um, so we approved this five to nothing in ways and means. So I'll put that in the form of a motion and I'll let uh, Representative <coughs> Alphone have any further reports if he has. And the attorney from Robinson and Cole is present if anybody has any particular questions about this matter. Thank you. Representative Alphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Admin Services did also hear this in our committee meeting last week. Um, we heard this more for the land acquisition part of it or the uh, acquiring of the town road. This did pass in committee uh, with a six to zero vote. Okay, motion on the floor to approve this. Is there any discussion on this transfer? Representative Brockett? Yeah, Mr. Moderator, thank you. So may I hear you the microphone, please? Mr. Moderator, first of all, I'd ask for a roll call vote in this matter. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd like to begin by thanking all of those who helped put together the settlement for Crescent Bluff. Thanks to our first electman, Jamie Cosgrove, counsel for the town, Robin Sandler, president of the Pine Orchard Association, and counsel for the Pine Orchard Association. Thank you also, counsel for the neighbors for Crescent Bluff and Beechcroft LLC. I want to especially thank the 51 members of the community who gave their time to speak or supply written testimony or evidence for the panel hearing held at the fire headquarters here in January. 
The settlement before this body is a comprehensive agreement that resolves all of the pending litigation in which the town of Bradford is involved, as well as other litigation involving Crescent Bluff Avenue and Beechcroft LLC. Over the past few weeks, this settlement was approved by the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Finance, the Administrative Services Committee, the Ways and Means Committee, a positive approval from the Planning and Zoning, and a unanimous vote by the Pine Orchard Association, and most importantly, all of the landowners who reside on Crescent Bluff. I urge all of the RTM members to do the same. Fiscally, this settlement is a good business decision for the town of Brantford because it relieves us of the cost of continuing litigation. It clarifies that the town will have an easement to access the drainage pipe that runs to the shoreline. And it potentially generates additional tax income for the town. Regarding legal costs, prior to the settlement, the town of Brantford was inextricably linked and named in two long-standing lawsuits. The first was a lawsuit in Hartford on the complex litigation docket, and the second was a petition under a very old statute to lay out a road. Over the course of the past 17 years of litigation, there were several cases that ended up in the Connecticut Supreme Court. These two cases are no different and could easily be appealed to the Supreme Court, especially the case concerning the ancient statute to lay out a road. Either one of those cases on appeal would result in thousands of dollars of litigation that would far exceed the payment of 200000 for the road. Given the unique history of Crescent Bluff Avenue, the defects in titles to certain properties, and the onslaught of litigation, this settlement makes good business sense. Regarding access to the drainage pipe, under this agreement, the paved portion of Crescent Bluff Avenue will be deeded to the town, and the town will have an easement for the drainage pipe that runs from the end of the road to the shoreline. Regarding tax income, several properties on Crescent Bluff Avenue have languished on the market for years. A few sold considerably less than market value. The uncertainty and unpleasantness arising from the volume of litigation unquestionably contributed to this. This can only increase upon approval of this settlement. In November of 2017, I was elected to represent RTM 7th District, along with Representative Sandler, and Representative Anderson, who now represents the 4th District. In November of 2019, I was re-elected, and I served the 7th along with Representatives Healy and Leach, both of whom are here tonight. Over the years, all of us have been involved in some fashion or another with Crescent Bluff, and we all strongly support Crescent Bluff Avenue becoming a public road. One of the reasons I ran for the RTM and became involved in public service was to be, give back to the town of Brantford. I was born and raised in this town, received a solid education from this town, have many friends in this town, and know the history of this town. This is a terrific community. And if I believe I could contribute in some small way, it would make Brantford a better place for the future. During my first term on the RTM, I cast some votes that I believe will make Brantford a better place, such as my vote to renovate the library and restore the police pension. But there is nothing to date that gives me greater satisfaction than to vote in favor of the settlement for Crescent Bluff Avenue. A century ago, Crescent Bluff was one parcel of land owned by one individual. Today, there are 21 homes situated on Crescent Bluff Avenue. Four are on the water and 17 are interior lots. Since 2003, the interior lot homeowners have spent thousands upon thousands of dollars in litigation that involves several issues, including ownership of the road. For nearly two decades, the interior lot owners' lives were turned upside down over the multitude of legal issues surrounding Crescent Bluff, such as who had access to the beach, who had access to the road, and even who could walk on the road. There was police activity and the threat to arrest anyone who walked on the road but not, did not live on the road. An affirmative vote on this settlement agreement changes everything for all of the interior lot owners on Crescent Bluff, as well as all other Brantford residents who walk on Crescent Bluff. No longer will the Paquins, the Cronins, the Weebies, the Cirillos, the Baldwin, Mrs. Redden, Mrs. Verderain, Mr. Hirschman and Mrs. Musvig, Mr. Ladano, Mr. Charles III, Mr. Dimler, and Mrs. Rossetti, 
Ms. Rivera, Mr. and Mrs. Sessa, Mr. Leone and Mrs. Marinino, Ms. Alley, Mr. Capetta, Mr. and Mrs. Wheeler have to live with an ominous storm cloud hanging over their lives that they have for the past 17 years. A yes vote makes this a town road and returns normalcy to the homeowners on Crescent Bluff Avenue as to many others who drive, walk, or bicycle there. The town will now have access to its utilities under the road without having to check with a private owner or risk a lawsuit to fix a pipe. Over the past two and a half years, I have been lucky to meet so many wonderful families who reside on Crescent Bluff. I have listened to their stories and experiences living on Crescent Bluff during their course of some very ugly litigation. I am grateful for the opportunity they've given me to be one of their representatives in the 7th District. Whatever small part I played in assisting these folks in reaching a settlement is nothing compared to what they have endured for a very long time. My yes vote is one small token that will hopefully restore their peaceful enjoyment of their homes. They deserve it. Thus, I strongly encourage every single one of my colleagues on the RTM to vote in favor of Crescent Bluff settlement. This is not a partisan issue. This is an issue about making the lives of 21 Brantford families better than it has been for many years. Finally, I want to give a very special thanks to someone who's been my close friend, Bob Wheeler. Mr. Wheeler's courage, resolve, and resilience over the past 17 years is nothing short of heroic. The town of Brantford needs more people like you, sir. Thank you for everything you have done for the people on Crescent Bluff. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Is there any, uh, is there any other discussion on this item? Mr. Cook. Is that a microphone there? On the table. On the table, yeah. I've got a couple comments. Can someone tell us the uh, logistics of what went on down there with the settlement? I know that there was a road in question, obviously Crescent Bluff. There was a lawn. Um, there was a beach. How does all that stack up to what you're asking for in terms of the settlement? I know, in other words, can people use the lawn now? Is it strictly for the Sadis family? How does that work? Anybody else? Mr. Brock? Uh, yes. To the best of my knowledge, Mr. Cook and Mr. O'Hanlon is here if we need any further clarification. But as I understand the settlement, the town will receive the road. It'll be deeded the road. The grassy strip or a part of the lawn area goes back to Beechcroft LLC, which is owned by Mrs. Seguise. Now, where is that? I don't mean to That's at the end of the road, sir. Okay. So uh, when you say on the, strip, you mean lawn? The lawn area, yes. Okay. okay. And there's 11 feet of the lawn area that'll be deeded to the Pine Orchard Association with the town maintaining an easement to fix the drainage pipe so that the people will have access to Crescent Bluff. Okay. That's not part of the town settlement. That's part of the settlement between the Pine Orchard Association and Beechcroft LLC. So what does that translate into in terms of the use of the lawn? They get to go across it uh, just uh, momentarily to go to the beach, even though there is My understanding is everybody in the Pine Orchard Association will have access to the beach through the 11 foot walkway that goes from the road to the beach and the town will have an easement for the drainage pipe that'll be under that walkway. Okay, but the other part of the lawn area will be deeded completely to Beechcroft LLC or Mrs. Seguise as okay. that may be the case. Okay, and you know, Representative Brockett, that there is no beach, they're just rocks. But I understand that, I've been there. The other thing I wanna say, and I don't mean any disrespect by this, is there are two sides to this issue. And although you can compliment the neighbors and all this, and that's fine, the, the uh, Sajis family went through a lot also. Now, I'm not here to debate that, but I think we should recognize that there are two sides. And you know, although you spoke well for the neighbors, I'd like to say that I did, that I did, that I did get to know the uh, family, and you know, they had a rough time too. So. And I can tell you that I met with Mrs. Seguise okay. and I met with all the neighbors down there. I'm very well the fact that there's two sides to the story. In okay. fact, sir, there are many more sides than two sides. There's the town side, there's the Pine Orchard Association side, there's sides from other people, but 
I'm appreciative of everybody in this for coming together and resolving the issue rather than having to spend additional money. Well, then you should say that with all respect. You know, you just cited the neighbors. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any further discussion? Representative Tuil? Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I also agree with Representative Brockett. I think everyone should vote for this. I played a very tiny role in this a long time ago, about 12, 14 years ago, when First Selectman uh, Anthony Young de Ross was in the office. Um, I went to see him. I said, you know, I just heard about this horrible situation uh, down at Crescent Bluff. It's been going on for quite a while. These people pay big taxes down there. I said, there should be town involvement. There should be a town attorney involved in the, the case or cases that are, you know, at Crescent Bluff. So he said to me, yep, I think you're right, and that's what I'll do, and that's what he did, and so over, it's, I mean, that was, I don't know, 12 years ago, but it's taken all this time, but it's resolved now, and that's great. Thank you. Representative Black. I mean, I, my own memory from 17 years ago is, is different. I had a different conversation with Representative, with uh, First Selectman Ross when you know, I urged some town involvement because of the way that T-shaped property was. Um, and his response was, we just didn't think we should get involved with it. Um, you know, I know the town came late to the game on, on this in terms of the involvement. Um, I don't want to really rehash over 17 years, but as Representative Brock had said, this is a multifaceted issue. Um, I played on that lawn as with Mr. Wheeler's son when I was in high school and with other uh, people on Crescent Bluff. I had high school friends there. Um, but uh, this is a settlement. Nobody's completely happy, I'm sure. Uh, but as I said, it's the, uh, the best of bad options, and that's the way settlements work. So again, let's just all vote in favor of it now and put this matter to bed. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? If not, this will be a roll call. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Mr. Sandler. <coughs> For those of you who don't know me, my name is Robin Sandler, and I live at 15 Hart Avenue, which is in the Pine Orchard section of Brantford. I'm also president of the Pine Orchard Association, which is a party to the settlement that has been discussed here tonight. Uh, the association is, not, is more than just a beach association. It's actually chartered by the uh, Connecticut legislature about 105, 110 years ago. And we have the authority of a municipality. We can tax, and uh, we do tax. We have zoning authority, and um, we're governed by a 12-member executive board elected by the over 400 residents that live in our community. I'm sorry, 400 property owners that live in our community. At our early March 2020 meeting, the executive board was presented the terms of its part of the settlement and we voted unanimously to enter into that settlement agreement. And uh, I urge the members of the RTM to vote affirmatively, affirmatively on the resolution that's here tonight to fund it. Um, thank you very much. Any other comments or discussion on this item? Hearing none, this will be a roll call vote. <clears throat> Representative Edelman. Yes. Representative Alphone. Yes. Representative Anderson. Yes. Representative Austin. Yes. Representative Black. Yes. Representative Brockett. Yes. Representative Conklin. Yes. Representative Everson. Yes. Representative Erlanger. Yes. <clears throat> Representative Greenberg. Yes. Representative Healy. Yes. Representative Henschel. Representative Hines. Yes. Representative Ingraham. Yes. Representative Leach. Yes. Representative Lombardi. Yes. Representative Sember. Yes. Representative Sires. Yes. Representative Stepanek. Yes. 
Representative Tuhill. Yes. Thank you. Oh. Representative Sullivan, I, I'm used to you saying no. <laughs> I already wrote it for no. An automatic no. Unanimous vote. Yeah. Unanimous vote. Okay, item number nine, to consider an appropriate approved request from the Human Services Director for the following budget transfers from other purchase services, 33620 to seasonal part-time help, 33620 and from other purchase services, 4000 to furniture and fixtures, 4000 Representative Alphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this is a two-part transfer, obviously. The first part dealing with the 33620 is uh, kind of a housekeeping item where uh, the request is to change the status of two 1099 subcontracted employees <coughs> to part-time employees. The change is requested due to the eligibility requirements to receive a 1099. Um, there are some, ad some small additional be benefits to the positions as part-time employees with minimal increase of cost to the town. Um, the increased benefits would be one hour of paid sick time for every 40 hours worked, as well as uh, unemployment benefits available to the part-time employees. It is only two positions. Um, I want to say it's at LCSW and one clinician. Uh, the second part of this transfer is for the purchase of some additional chairs and furniture for the counseling center. Uh, it's money that's already budgeted for. They have a little overage in their over per other purchase services account, and they'd like to uh, use that up this year by purchasing additional furniture and chairs. This did pass in committee with a six to zero vote, and I put that forward. It's motion on the floor to approve the transfer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Transfer carries. Item number 10, to consider a request from the first selectman regarding an appropriation of 14000 for the creation of an emergency management <coughs> stipend account. Representative Black. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, we heard this in committee a week ago uh, in Ways and Means. This is coming out of contingency. Um, this is uh, for a $12,000 stipend uh, for the emergency management director, a position appointed by the Board of Selectmen, currently held by the Fire Chief, and a $2,000 stipend for his assistant, uh, one of the assistant fire chiefs at this point. Um, just both those stipend positions may be moved to you know, other departments or other people, um, so that's why they weren't built into the salary, and they're kept separate from that. Uh, this is in line with what other towns in the area are doing the compensation is more than some and less than others. Um, our committee voted four to one in favor of this. Uh, I know Representative Brockett wants to make a minority report. This was also heard by Admin Services, which really has more cognizance over the uh, position in general. So at this point, I'll uh, let Anthony make a um, Make his committee report. And then we'll have our committee is to. You're going to give him a minority report? report? I'll let Anthony do his minority report. All right. Uh, Tom can make his uh, minority report. Okay. Representative Alphon. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I think Representative Black touched on most of the key issues, but just to add to that, uh, the stipend, the total is $14,000, which is being covered by a grant um, as part of the requirement of the stipend or whoever's receiving the stipend will be writing some grants. Um, some of the, I don't know if you mentioned this, Representative Black, but some of the responsibilities for the emergency management position is coordinating with state and federal departments, also updating the state emergency readiness plan. Uh, this did pass in committee with a four to two vote. I don't know if there's a minority report from the admin services committee, if anybody wants to make that. or. Um, Representative, Black, Representative Brockett said uh, Brockett said he would just leave it up to you. Mr. Representative Moderator. Black. I could, uh, one clarification on the, the grant and the first selectman, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's a uh, essentially emergency preparedness grant from the state that's a dollar for every uh, 
inhabitant of your town, so it's uh, our population is roughly 28,000, so that's how much money we get. Um, it requires a sort of, fit, or rather not a dollar, we have to spend a dollar, we get 50 cents for each inhabitant, so it's roughly $14,000 that we'll get. Um, and so we have to spend $14,000, so these salaries is essentially half. Most towns do use this grant and money and they pay an emergency management director as part of their portion of um, matching funds for the state grant and then there'll be equipment for emergency preparedness that we also spend. So we need to spend 28,000 and then we get half of that back and that's been the procedure. Um, so it's not entirely covered by the grant, but uh, that's the, the way it works. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion on this item? Representative Brockett. Thank you, Mr. Murray. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Murray. Thank you, Peter. Um, I don't disagree with the uh, committee chair report for Ways and Means, nor do I disagree with the committee chair's reports for admin services. Um, I rise to uh, let you know that I'm going to vote against this. And I'm not voting against this because I don't think that the emergency management director should be compensated. Um, if the emergency management director is performing the duties and responsibilities and functions of that position, I think that the emergency management director should be compensated. However, I'm voting against this because I do not believe that paying such compensation in the form of a stipend is good for two reasons. A, I think it sets a terrible precedent for the town because the next employee will come along and say I'm doing something extra and now I'm on a stipend. And B, I think it's poor government. So I will vote no on this. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Any other discussion on this item? Selectman uh, Cosgrove, you want to speak to this? Uh, I, I guess the only thing I would add just in response to that, uh, you know, I, I'm glad to hear that we recognize that the role of EMD, which is a critical uh, uh, role to, in the town of Brantford, uh, certainly we're going through it right now with the uh, coronavirus, and uh, we've been operating our, out of our EOC, having a, um, unified uh, command meetings and uh, participating in a, a lot of uh, state and regional uh, conference calls regarding uh, that, that situation. Um, I know the uh, committees re, uh, reported on uh, and were, were favorable. However, just for the remark about setting a precedent, I think that uh, the use of stipends already exists in the town. There are a number of uh, stipends with, even within the fire department. Uh, however, the reason why it's being requested now by the uh, first selectman, my office, the executive office, is because the role of EMD is a direct appointment by the board of selectmen. So this is um, above and beyond and outside the scope of the roles of the fire chief as well as the fire department, what this uh, position does. So <clears throat> that's where the other thing with the... Uh, um, stipend would, that would remove that would be be able to be follow the position and not tied uh, directly to the individual. I just have a question. Sure. Is that the reason why it didn't come before public services? That we didn't see it come before. Yes. Yeah, so it was a request by um, you know I made the request so we went through admin services and uh, um, and ways and means for the transfer. But yes. Any other discussion on this item? Hearing Representative Tuhill. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I attended the meetings when this was thoroughly threshed out and discussed. Uh, I support the uh, stipends with the fourteen thousand plus the one for two thousand. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve and two. Thank you, Representative Black. The, um, Fourteen thousand. Uh, it was explained to us that the reason we're eligible for the grant of twenty-eight thousand is because the fire chief did complete the eight uh, units of course credit, and it was also pointed out to us by Selectman Ray Dunbar that you know that this is a lot of work, 
and then you know, there should be some compensation. So it's a reasonable amount. And then also the the um, we also heard the research done by the first selectman that called other towns to find out as to how you know <coughs> as to how he called the other nearby towns to find to find out what type of compensation they paid. So it, this this uh, this. Um, uh, Stipend seems like a reasonable uh, thing to do, so thank you. All right, any further discussion? Representative Edelman? I'm up to vote in favor of this bill, but I do want to echo Representative Brockett's um, concerns regarding the fact that this is done by way of a stipend. Um, despite, uh, or echoing what the first selectman said, it doesn't have to follow the individual, but um, I think it could be part of the budget process moving forward and part of the compensation package for the job. And any future contract can state if the work is performed, and that is the amount that's paid for it. But I think that uh, government would best be served by making that part of the uh, compensation for the individuals, opposed to by way of a stipend. Representative Tuil. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, as it was explained to us by Selectman Ray Dunbar, he used to have this position, and he said he was paid overtime for the extra time and work that's involved with this. Now, our current fire chief's contract, all he gets is the contract pay. There's, I don't think he can even get overtime. So the only way to compensate him is through the stipend. Thank you. Well, okay, fine. any further discussion on this item? Representative Everson? Well, what uh, Representative Tuol just said was not something that was discussed at administrative services. No. So- it ways and means. Right. So information is being shared tonight that was not shared at administrative services. So it's that's true. It doesn't seem like it's I, I correct yeah. to have information come out at a meeting and it not be briefed when we came, when the first selectman came before administrative services, and then something different is said before ways and means, and then we have two different reports. It just doesn't seem like that's good government either. Well, can, can I respond? I know it's my third time. I, I don't think Representative Tuil is speaking in for, for ways and means. The chairman already gave his report. I think you're just, your comment was a, just for a, a, a general comment. Well, the, I'd just like to, um, to answer what, what the representative said. What happened was there were questions raised right, at the administrative services meeting, and then the following evening, because part of this stipend is coming from contingency, Ways and Means heard it, and the first selectman did research in between the two meetings. And so, you know, that's how we got the rest of the information. So I guess what you've got to do is, you know, you have to go to all the meetings to, to get all the information. Representative Black. <clears throat> I mean, Frank, you know, I guess maybe people have different memories, but I attended both meetings and, uh, you know, I didn't learn anything new um, at Ways and Means. We may have had a lengthier discussion. I think it was Representatives Rocket's firm position that this should be part of the salary and integrated into his contract, and that's why it may have been more lengthy <coughs> at uh, Ways and Means than it was in administrative services, but uh, the stipends are always that way. Um, so I don't think anything was hidden from admin services. I certainly heard it that way. I think we we had a lengthier discussion about it at Ways and Means than was had at Admin Services. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. no. Two. Look, three. Looks like two. Three. three. No. One. Two. Three. Oh wait! I gotta get wait, these. One, um, two, three, four, five. Five okay. notes. Okay. This item carries. Sullivan. You got that? December. It's the panic. It's the panic. All set? Yep, thank okay. you. Okay. Item number 11, to consider an appropriate, approve an appropriation in the Coastal Resilience Fund for the purchase of a property and structure located at 17 Creek Court and act on the resolution from Coastal Resilience Fund, fund balance transfer 125000 
and then increase the land acquisition fund by 125,000. Resolved, the RTM approves an appropriation of 125,000 in the Coastal Resilience Fund. This appropriation will be funded through an appropriation from the fund balance. Representative Black. Uh, Ways and Means he heard this um, last uh, week, a week ago, as did uh, Admin Services, the prior uh, week, and uh, actually both committees voted to re-refer this. There's additional information that we'd like to flesh out, um, so I'll put that in the form of a motion to re-refer. And uh, anyone concerned about this, that we may work out a, uh, a joint meeting, I suggest that you attend those committee meetings, um, so at this point I'll give it to Admin Service. Thank you, Representative Black. Just to reiterate, there was a lot of open-ended questions that uh, we needed additional information on before voting on this, so we did make a motion to re-refer, and that motion did pass in committee with a unanimous six to zero vote. Okay, motion on the floor to re-refer this item. Any discussion? Representative yes. Everson? Um, the open-ended questions is the fact that the town is being sued over this piece of property. That was not disclosed to the Board of Finance before they approved it, and it was not disclosed prior to administrative services meeting either. So the motion on the floor is a referral. Right. The, so it, the, it should the, be re-referred, but, yeah, but I thought I'm saying, it was important but, to bring out that no, but, but information. The, yeah, but we're mo my motion is to re-refer. No discussion on anything other than that. If you, that's what the motion is, just to re-refer the item. Right. So for that reason, it should be Yeah, but you shouldn't. There's no discussion other than that. <clears throat> Any other discussion on the re-referral of this item? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Great. This item is re-referred. Item number 12, any other business that come before the RTM? Uh, just a brief thing that on the petitions, the town clerk will be sending out the copies of all the petitions that I read that I sent to the committee. Any other business that come before the RTM? Representative Sullivan. Um, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just wanted to call attention to a couple of things that uh, didn't get on the regular RTM agenda that we talked about briefly at R&O, um, and I didn't know if Representative Black was going to send these to get on the full agenda, but we had um, talked briefly about considering the disestablishment of the Town Water Commission, and um, we also were considering a repeal of ordinances dealing with piggeries. So if anybody in the public is interested in those issues, um, they are being discussed at R&O right now, so I want to just make sure that people were aware of these things. and. Um, I think that they should probably get put onto the full RTM agenda as we move forward. Thank you. If I, you have to take that right So <laughs> he wanted your money. Yeah, you Mr. Moderator. Yeah, one of uh, RNO's charges under its rules is a <coughs> continual review of ordinances. Um, so I took it upon myself as uh, chair to put these on our agenda. Um, the Water Commission is something that I don't think has a current function. Um, there's currently no members of it, so you know the question is should we eliminate that rather than having a commission that doesn't have a present function and um, doesn't have any members. Um, and the, the piggeries is a pre-zoning ordinance regarding piggeries, um, animals, and how big a lot you need for animals, including pigs, is covered under our zoning regulations. So this is uh, probably going to eliminate a ordinance that came into being in 1940 as the town was getting crowded, but we didn't have zoning yet. People were concerned about pigs next door. Um, so I think my, my version is we should try to keep things in, in one place, like zoning regs, when you're wondering can I have a horse, can I have a pig, or whatever it is, you just go to one place rather than having to worry about a, an ordinance somewhere else. Thank you. All right, so uh, Representative Black, are you going to send an email to me to... Uh... You can pick it up. Yeah. Pick. Okay. Any other business come before the RNT, Mr. Cook? <coughs> Mr. Cook, is this pertaining to uh, what we discussed earlier? Uh, 
Okay, any other business uh, to come before the RTM? I've uh, just handed out a booklet put out by the uh, Columbia Law School, which will be part of my correspondence later, but I'm introducing it separately now. And you can see quite clearly what it is for the camera out there. I don't know where Henry is, but it's fighting small town corruption. I don't think there's any secret that I feel that this town is corrupt. Um, it's interesting because I put up all these signs last summer. And I think you yeah. remember these. And uh, what was really interesting about this was that people complained a lot. You know, that there were too many signs, that they were located in the wrong locations, to the point where Public Works was taking them almost as fast as we put them up. And that became an issue in and of itself. But you know what was really interesting about that? In six months of doing that, not one single person, not the selectmen, not any of you, not anybody in the public, not one person said that the signs were wrong. Because the signs aren't wrong. And people know that. And we're going to show in the next few months the facts behind that. The selectman has a lot, quite frankly, and I won't go on and on here, that he needs to be accountable for. And he's not accountable. And we're going to hold them accountable, because it's time. <coughs> and it doesn't just stop and end with, uh, I'm sorry, start and stop with Costco. It goes further, it goes to Parkside Village, stuff that goes on down there that nobody answered to. It's, it goes to Atlantic Wire. What are all those piles out there for, for years now? What is it, two years? Nobody knows what's in them. The selectman stands up and he goes, under control. No, it's not. Absolutely not. So you're and aware, you should uh, know better. Mr. Cook, you're aware those items went to committee? I, my point is... So guess, let's get I, to No, I'm speaking to the accountability of this government to the people. That's it. And it includes this body, it includes the selectman's office, it includes everybody. And up until now, it, it is, has not been there. Is it corrupt? I think it is. You could differ. But we'll find out. Because Selectman Dunbar, when he ran for office, said that he's going to get an answer. Are these signs right or are they wrong? Well, he's on it now. Because we're going to put it right in his lap, Selectman Dunbar. Is it right? Are they right or are they wrong? One more thing, and I feel maybe I should say this. Um, you know, this is, this is part of what you know, I'm going through right now in terms of wanting to reveal the accountability issue and all that. But I was very touched, and my family was very touched by the RTM and their moment of silence for Denise. And I thank, thank Representative Tuhill very much for doing that. It meant more, you know. It's very hard for us, and believe me, I, I'm trying to separate the two because I feel very passionate about this, but I also recognize that they're very, very good people in this town, and very, very good people here, and I just want you to know that we appreciated that more than you know. Thank you. All right. Any other business come before the art, Tim? If not, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? We are adjourned. Okay, drop it. we got a plan. Yeah. Yeah. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.